Hello and welcome to a quick tutorial on how to make a platformer or side-scroller game in Click Team Fusion without any programming knowledge or programming. Sorry if I sound kind of sick, that's because I am. Sorry if I sound depressed or sick, because one of those is true. Alright, so I started out, I made a new application, you click this button over here. I'm going to rename it by pressing F2, F2. I'm going to name it Side Scroll. Uh, you can check the description of this video for the source files if you're having trouble following along. I'll probably link them in a uh, Mediafire zip file or something. Alright, I have it set to Windows EXE application. If you have the free version, which I can include a link to, uh, you're going to have to use HTML5. I also think that there's a limit to how many events you can use, so I'm going to try to make this in a few events. So the first thing you see is frame 1. You want to double click on that. You can rename it to game. Alright, a frame is basically, uh, I guess, a frame like in a film. You can imagine it that way. There are many different frames and you can switch between them. That's not the best analogy, but whatever, it works. So the, currently the resolution of this application is 640 pixels by 480. 480 tall, obviously. 640 wide, so we need to change that 640 in the frame here to something a bit higher. Let's try 1280. That seems a little short. Let's try 2560 maybe. Alright. You can hold down the middle mouse button and scroll with it. Alright. I'm going to try to make this 2000 actually because this tutorial should be short. Alright. Now we have our frame. It's extended. This is here what I'm highlighting with my mouse is the visible area of the screen. Alright, so now we can start with this. You can double click to insert an object. Let's insert an active object. I'm going to click F2 and rename it to ball. Press enter on that ball or double click it. Let's zoom in with the scroll wheel. Let's make an orange ball. There we go. Nice quick ball. Let's click on it, go to the movement section over here, and let's make that a platform movement object. Alright. As it is, button 1 seems to be shift so we can edit the controls, the bindings for the keys by going to side scroll here, going over to this play button, scrolling down, going to default controls. Click keyboard, where it says uh, button 1, you want to click space. Now for the second part of the tutorial. Alright, now that we've got the frame set up and the application as well, we can go on to make this actually functional. So, we need to make a ground now. Let's use another active object. You can also use backdrops for this, but in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to do it with active objects. Since this is going to be a little bit simpler. Or not. This is just how I like to do it. So you can zoom out with the control and then minus on the number pad. Let's click on here again after we select it so we can resize it. There, that looks okay. We're going to resize it down like this as well. There, that looks good. Now we can double click on it. Scroll out. Delete. Let's select a nice shade of green and fill it all in. Then select the eraser or the line. Select the line actually since you can make straight lines then. Click on this transparent icon maybe bump up the size and start making your terrain alright I'm back I finished my terrain now we can fill we can get rid of these weird squares We can select the paint bucket and just fill in what we don't want with transparency that looks good let's exit okay that looks fine now let's go into the event editor up here and let's set a new condition when the pe when the player collides with another object, which is the ground, we're going to go to movement and stop the player. Let's see if this works. Press F7 to run the frame or F8 to run the application. There. Let's see if we can move around. We can move around freely, but we don't jump very high. We also need to make sure that we can't go outside and fall off. So for that, let's set a new condition, let's test the position, and let's just set it 
so that you cannot exit the frame on the left or right. And let's just do the stop again. Let's see if this works. That seems to work fine. Alright. Let's go back to the object here. And let's see. Let's change the strength to 75. Um, and then go back to the event editor. Select an always command. Go over here to movement, I believe, and set gravity. Let's set the gravity to 40. Alright, then we can have here, we're going to make a new command. The keyword, repeat while the key is pressed, let's press space. Let's go to movement, set gravity, let's make that 25. This will make it so that you can jump higher the longer you hold space, I guess. Oh, let's test it out. There, you hold it, you press it quickly, don't go very high. You hold a longer time and you go higher. Seems to work okay. There, you can jump around all you want. Alright. As of now, we're not able to scroll sideways. We're only able to, you no, know, stay in this one area, so let's change that. Let's go back to this always command. Under the checkerboard, or the chessboard actually, you want to right click, scrolling center window position in frame and, and then click on your object so it says relative to ball press F8 let's check it out as you can see we can scroll freely the window will always be centered around our ball and we can't exit the frame alright that's good well you're probably saying that's no fun we need some platforms and enemies so let's make a platform real quick we can double click select an active object let's place it here there we go let's extend it a little bit we can make this uh maybe a box i guess let's make it that high Control a delete everything select brown i'll make the texture and be right back all right i made the texture let's click ok there it is say we don't like the box being in front of the grass so we can right click on it order to back there now it's behind the grass we need to set up the collisions now so we can go to new condition the ball collides with the box movement stop Let's see how that works yep seems about right maybe we should make the box taller so you can't jump onto it from here all right, let's make that a couple pixels taller. So you can click on it, click on it once more. Don't double click though. Make it about that high. Let's see if this works. Yes, that seems to work. So you need to get a running start from here to jump on top of the box. That seems to work quite well. All right, don't, remember, uh, don't forget to save your project. So you can do that by pressing Control S. I'll save and be right back. Alright, I've saved my project and I'm back. Now, I think we should set up an enemy. We should probably have an enemy right here. So let's create a new active object. Let's place it right here. By the way, I have snapping to grid enabled, which you can enable up here. That's the grid and that's snapping to grid here. You can toggle them on and off. Here, let's press F2, rename this to an enemy. I don't think that's how you spell an enemy, but whatever. Let's make this bright red to make sure that it gets the point across that this is big and evil, I guess. Or not big, but just evil. Let's get out our pencil or brush tool. Let's paint it some white eyes and a scary black mouth. That doesn't look too scary, but it's good enough. Alright, let's go to the movements here and we can make this a path object you can click edit path let's zoom in with control plus after we exit edit path zoom in there oh okay i guess we can't zoom in click new line click where you want it to end uh let's let's have him go up the hill and back let's set the speed to 10 
Okay. Let's make a new line. Set the speed to 10. Alright. Let's click reverse at end. I think we need to click here too and click reverse at end. That's good. Alright. Now let's test to see if the movement works. Alright. It seems to go very fast and then not finish. So we need to fix this. Let's click this here. Loop the movement there. Let's make it 10. Let's test this out. Oh. Alright. By the way, there are no collisions just yet. This seems to work just fine. Alright, time to make a collision for this guy. Let's open the event editor. Collision between the enemy and the ball. Let's go to the chessboard and restart the current frame. Let me run this as an application, not the frame, otherwise it'll crash, I think. Right there. Restarts every time you touch him. That seems good. Now let's give this a nice background this level. Let's click on the frame. Let's edit the background color, make it blue. It's an ugly blue. There. Alright. Now we need to make an endpoint. Let's go over here, double click, insert an active object. Let's make it quite a bit bigger. Alright. I'm gonna quickly draw a flag and be right back. Alright, I've drawn a flag. We can Put this to the back, order to back. Let's name this flag. Let's go into the event editor. Collision between the ball and the flag. We're going to do next frame. Now click here onto the storyboard editor and click the number 2 to create a second frame. Let's call this finished. Now we can put a string which is basically just text right here we can expand it a bit we can double click to edit the text let's type congrats you are the winner all right you can go over here to the font enlarge it quite a bit let's make this go down a little bit this is very bad i know and there you go. Let we can make a button now to restart it. So if you find the button up here, let's place it right there. And say restart. Go to the event editor, new condition, button clicked, restart application. Let's see how that runs. Alright, you can press F8 to run the entire application. Let's press F8. Alright, let's try running into this enemy. Oh, we restart it. That works nicely. Let's try jumping over him when he comes back. Just to give this a good test. Alright. There we go. Let's see. There you go. It seems to work. Let's restart. Yep. It works great. I'm going to have the link to this in the description of the video. Hopefully this helps you. Uh, subscribing really helps me. As... Susan Wazowski, the CEO of YouTube, decided to be a poopy butt and make the s subscriber threshold, I guess, uh, 1,000 for monetization, so I'm not able to put ads on my videos anymore. So that really sucks, so any subscribe will help me. Thanks.